Yo, what's going on, guys? Crispy Flakes here for today's video. We are going over an article by Fran Blindberry of NBA.com. Um, this article is 10 players who could earn first NBA All-Star nod in a 2017-2018 NBA season. Now, I'm really curious, like, what players are going to be on this list from the standpoint of, you know, players that are a bit older that have been snubbed in recent years. Um, I know, like, Mike Conley comes to mind, you know, guys like that. But also, um, at the same time, it's like you got so many like, good players in the Western Conference now. that the Eastern Conference, it kind of frees up spots for certain players that would not make it in the past to make it there now. So we're going to see what this is all about. And uh, let's get going on, my friends. Uh, number one, we got Carl Anthony Towns of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Last year, guys, he averaged 25 points, 11 rebounds per game. This man should have made the All-NBA first team. Like, I'm not going to lie, guys. He should have been All-NBA first team, but I believe it was DeAndre Jordan that made it. I don't know if they could, did he even make an All-NBA team. Like, I think it was DeAndre Jordan. I think DeMarcus Cousins might have made one. But I will say, while I do think the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to have a fantastic year, Carl Anthony Towns, man, it's like... If he doesn't get it, it's going to be absolutely crazy. But there's a lot of good big guys in the Western Conference. I, mean, I already named, like like I said, DeMarcus Cousins, DeAndre Jordan. You got uh, Anthony Davis, Marcus Saul. You know, so many good players out there that I can see it being very difficult to even get a spot on the All-Star team. But Carl Anthony Towns, like, playing the way he was at 21. Uh, or I guess, no, he was only 20 last season. So, yeah, he better make it, guys. He better make it. I'll be pissed off, man. And I'm not even a Minnesota Turnbulls fan. Uh, next up, we got, here we go, Mike Conley for point guard. So... Yeah, man, he's just, uh, Mike Conley is, what I, you know, he's never really been a flashy point guard, but he's always been, like, a beacon of consistency. Like, he's always been good for, like, what, 17, 18 points per game? You know, like, 8, 9 assists around there. I mean, he's always been decent, always had good defense. Um, but it's just that, you know, the Memphis Grizzlies is not the most sexiest team out there. And at the same time, it's like, the Western Conference is so stacked when it comes to the guard position. I mean, it's so stacked, guys, that I honestly, I, I don't see him making an all-star team unless he has MVP caliber season, which he's just not that really that type of player. But um, he is fantastic, and it's just like, you know, it's just so many good guards out in the Western Conference. Now, you go to the Eastern Conference, you might be the point guard for my Detroit Pistons. Uh, you might find yourself on the, on a, you know, all-star roster in the East. Uh, for big guy, we got Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz. So, okay, um... Says he was a finalist for the uh, Defensive Player of the Year. Another case where it's like, the Utah Jazz, this might be Rudy Gobert's season. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's not Whiteside. Did, Whiteside did not make the All-Star team in the Eastern Conference last season. And, you know, at Rudy Gobert's very best, I see him being able to put up a, tip, you know, a season compared to an Hassan Whiteside. I think they're both very similar players. Uh, but if that wasn't good enough for Hassan to make it in the Eastern Conference, I don't think it's going to be good enough for Rudy Gobert with those kind of stats to make it in the Western Conference. So I don't see it happening. Uh, now, um, you know, him being like the vocal leader and just like the uh, the main offensive guy and defensive guy for the Utah Jazz now, um, I do expect him to have an even better season, but not quite all-star caliber yet, or maybe not ever. Um, now we have Joel Embiid of the Philadelphia 76ers. He's a center, of course. Only played 31 games last season. Now, the thing about Joel is that he is, um, you know, playing the Eastern Conference. It's like if he does play healthy and he can put up, i say, a solid 35 minutes per game, um, he definitely can make a damn all-star team. It's like he is so good. But the thing is, is that the, the reason we say he's so good is because he put up some crazy-ass numbers in limited minutes and limited games. But, uh thing about being dominant in the NBA and really the players we look at for greatness is that they do it night in and night out for 81 games a season, man, or 82 games, my bad, you know, they're doing it in playoffs or anything too, so it's like, yeah, if we get to the all-star break and Joel proved that he's healthy, he plays a lot of minutes, he's putting up buckets, putting up rebounds, doing everything that we know he's capable of doing, um, I don't see any reason why he should not make the all-star team, and especially in the Eastern Conference. Uh, next, we have Miles Turner of the Indiana Pacers. Now, I think, I'm thinking on 2K18, I think he has, like, 84 rating overall. And honestly, like, the Pacers, um, not going to lie, like, Victor Oladipo, I think he's going to be a candidate for the most improved player. I feel like him combined with Miles Turner, who I expect to have a really big breakout season now that the team is officially his. Um, and, you know, being in the Eastern Conference, once again, I know I keep on saying that, but it definitely is something that you really have to think about because the East is so weak. It's like, I guess they got quite a few, you know, they got some decent big guys out there. You know, you got Sam Whiteside, you got Al Horford, who's decent, you got Andre Drummond, probably some other guys, you know, Chris Porzingis, other guys that I'm probably not saying. But yeah, Miles Turner, I, guess, I don't see why he couldn't make the spot. You know, Paul Millsap's not out there anymore. I mean, he made it last season. I, th I think it was due to injury. Um, but still, it's like, I can see Miles Turner totally, like, filling, like, that last roster spot for the Eastern Conference. All right, next, yup, 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 Hassan Whiteside, the Miami Heat. Now, he averaged like seven, what was it, 17 points per game last season? Okay, so I did actually, 
I expect um, his scoring to be like in the low 20s this season. Like, I, I'm hoping for a 21, 22 point per game season, being able to average around 12, 13 rebounds, and you know, still getting those blocks out there. He should definitely make the All Star team. Um, honestly, he, I think he was one of the most overlooked players last season, like what he did for Miami. And Miami was like, they were very close to making the damn playoffs. Like, they were like literally one game away from making the playoffs. And I think, you know, Deion Waiters being back and everything, and James Johnson, uh, Goran Dragic's a fantastic point guard. Uh, I think Bam is going to be a great rookie. I think he actually uh, is going to be one of the better rookies of this draft class. And it's like, yeah, I can definitely see this team making some moves out there on the South White side. Being the leader of this team, if he can nail in like a 7th or 8th seed in the Eastern Conference, uh, especially going to the All-Star break, if they're looking in that area, I can see him making an All-Star team. Bradley Beal of the Washington Wizards coming off his best season 23 points per game off 40% shooting Now think about Bradley Beal in the past. He's had big injury issues So that's a big reason why he didn't really make the all-star games or anything like that But last season was like his first like really like healthy season where it's like all right We know what this guy's capable of um, one of the better shooting guards in the Eastern Conference And I'll probably say so that's the thing though is like when it comes to the all-star selections now It's no longer like you need a point guard you need a shooting guard. It's just based off like guards and forwards so um, you know, Jimmy Buckets is no longer out in the, uh, Eastern Conference. You know, Paul George isn't there anymore. So there's so much room for guys like Bradley Beal to make their first All-Star team. It's just, I'm thinking, damn, dude, like, <laughs> All -Star, the All-Star game was going to be a blowout. There's going to be so many snubs in the Western Conference, and there's going to be some bitch ass in the Eastern Conference. People are being like, yo, man, the only make is in the Eastern Conference. I don't think Bradley Beal is one of those players, but it's going to happen. All right, next we have CJ McCollum. Oh, the Portland Trailblazers. Now, I thought for the I thought for a while that Damian Lillard did not make an All-Star team. It turns out he he did make one in the past. Um, I don't think he was on it last season, was he? But I think he was on it the year before. So CJ McCollum, he's not making the All-Star team, guys. I think he's a really good three-point shooter. Um, I really think he's a good second option for the uh, Portland Trailblazers, and I really think he's a fantastic player. If you play in the Eastern Conference, he'd definitely be an All-Star. But when you got guys like, I mean, for one, like Damian Lillard's gonna have a damn tough time making it, and I don't think CJ is gonna make it over Damian Lillard. So. I don't see it happening, man. It said he'd likely have to bump out teammate Damian Lillard for the spot. And Damian's just the better player of the two. I mean, it's just facts. And, uh, yeah, there's just there's not enough roster spaces to have a CJ McComb on the All-Star team, unfortunately. Next, we have Chris Topps, Porzingis of the New York Knicks. Um, yeah, so it's like if it says Carmel Anthony, if he gets his wish and gets traded out of New York, for one, that makes the team officially Chris Topps, Porzingis is like, before they were running the offense around Melo, but this time it's like, yo, Chris Topps is the guy on this team, he's going to be the guy getting the ball in his hand, taking all the shots, so yeah, I definitely see room for Chris Topps, Porzingis making the all-star team, um, plus he's just, he's just a fun player to watch, 7-3, got really good handles out there, it's like, he, I think he's built for the all-star game, personally, he's just a fun guy to watch, and uh, I'd like to see him make the all-star team, especially, um, you know, just for New York Knicks fans and everything. Next. Ooh, what the f Lonzo Ball, the Lakers? Come on, man. Wait, what's this say? He hasn't played a single game or lace-up sneakers to NBA practice. What if uh, he lives up to his number two pick? See, this is what I don't understand, man. Lonzo Ball, yes, he's a good player. But that's the thing. If it's based off, like, fan voting, I could see a guy like Lonzo Ball making it. But, man, that would be ridiculous. There ain't no way that Lonzo Ball should be making it before a guy like Mike Conley makes an all-star team. Or CJ McCollum. Or, you know, making it over a guy like, I don't know, like, I mean, got Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Jimmy Bucket, so many other good players out there. There ain't no way, especially, man, because the Lakers, they're not going to be fantastic this season. It's like, best, best, best case scenario, Lonzo Ball and the Lakers make the eighth seed. I don't think it's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, man, it's like, damn, for one, it's like they got Lonzo Ball in the rookie photo holding the ball like he's number one pick. And for second, this list don't even got Markel Fultz listed. And Markel Fultz, in my opinion, is the better of the two. So, I don't know, man. This is kind of a reach on this one. Who, who the dude that made this article? Who was it? Something Blindberry or something like that? Yeah, you got to be blind to freaking put goddamn Lonzo Ball on this list when there's so many other good guards in the NBA, especially in the Western Conference. If it was East, I'd be like, all right, I'll think about it. But, yeah, guys, that is the end of the list here. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video, man. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you are new to my channel. And peace out, my friends.